Good morning dudes, how is it going? Today we're taking a look at the game between Cloud9 and Ninjas in Pyjamas for the Dota Pit League Season 3. I kind of want to cast some games, but let me be honest with you, it's really difficult to find games that are not 25 minute storms. I have gone through a solid 30-40 games before I found this one, which seemed kind of interesting, right? But every other game is just a freaking storm. And that's, that's a bit weird, but I guess so. Also, I have a new method of keeping concentration while casting. Which is, I, I actually don't have sound right now. I don't know, I just... I'm not wearing headphones. And, uh... I don't know, I did that with the last one, kind of midway through. I just put down my headphones. And... From then on out, it just worked out really, really well. It's just nice to have, like, just some time for me and the game and no sound. Who needs sound? I don't need sound. Do you need sound? Nobody needs sound. Well, you guys have sound, but I don't. So, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the game. We have Winter Wyvern, Earthshaker, Shadowfiend, Bloodseeker for Ninjas in Pyjamas, and Io, Gyrocopter, Lion, and Storm Spirit for Cloud9. No, I did not pick this game because of Shadowfiend. It's just that Shadowfiend is really popular right now. You're gonna see him in a lot of games. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's just kind of something you have to deal with, right? If Queen of Pain is banned, if Lashrak is banned, Shadowfiend is next in line, right? Like, Queen of Pain and Lashrak are the top tier mid heroes. Those are the ones that you take if you can get them. And next in line are Storm Spirit and Shadowfiend, maybe a Wind Ranger, right? Something along those lines. But generally speaking, you see a lot of Shadowfiend because Lashrak and Queen of Pain are stupid and they get banned a lot. Now, Tusk, he, this guy has ascended to straight up first ban. Like, God, that hero is so good. It's kind of interesting how long it took us to figure that out, right? But holy hell, Bloodseeker and Tusk, those are the two new guys on the scene and they are making quite the splash. It's actually a little silly. But they are very powerful and... Uh, there's just nothing else to be said about that, right? It's just super, super scary. The, the Cloud9 also banned a Huskar. Huskar is a hero that I personally, I have to admit, I have grown to like more and more and more. I think he is actually pretty damn strong at this point. He does work well against a lot of hero in the meta, mostly, right? He works well against the Gyrocopter, for example, which is mostly magic. He works well against Storm Spirit, who is, again, mostly magic. Against Lion, mostly magic. Shadowfiend, Earthshaker. The only one he wouldn't work against this game is Bloodseeker, but Bloodseeker is not on Cloud9's team, right? He works well against the Zeus, he works well against the Queen of Pain, he works well against uh, against the Lashrak. I think Huskar, even though... I think, let's say, Huskar on its current power level would not have worked last patch, right? There would be a lot of physical damage carries running around. But because right now, heroes like Lashrak and Queen of Pain are so powerful, Lashrak actually has a really nice niche, and... He might be super, super valuable. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, we're going to see Zeus' last pick come out from Cloud9 and Disruptor for Ninjas in Pyjamas. Nothing too crazy there. Disruptor actually works kind of cute with Bloodseeker. Because you can't, like, rupture people and then glimpse them. Which does count, right? Like, rupture yes. counts any sort of movement as long as it's, I believe, in 1500 range. Something along those lines, right? But... That's a thing you can do to get quite a bit of extra damage in. <clears throat> Which is kind of neat. I don't know if that's why they picked Disruptor, because Disruptor is general Like, he's just, generally speaking, a good hero, right? But that's definitely something you have to keep in mind, right? Th those, are, those are cute plays. Like, those are not the kind of plays you pick a hero for. But these are the kind of plays that, you know, are appreciated, right? That, that's kind of part of it. Okay, th that's something we can do. We have a bit of a combo going on here, but in the end, that's a why we got... Disruptor. It's just Disruptor is an all-around really, really solid hero. And, yeah. So, uh, we're gonna have Earthshaker going top with Winter Wyvern currently. It seems like they just want to secure the runes. They got Winter Wyvern is actually maybe gonna run into Cloud9 right here. Ah, Gyrocopter is scared. Do you see that? He was really, really scared. He had that one moment of, of hesitation, and that might have just cost him the kill, because even though he doesn't notice, Winter Wyvern actually has a very limited backup. He has an Earthshaker that might or might not hit his Fisher, because he was quite a bit away, right? So there's a good shot at getting that kill if you just commit to it, but... Uh, he probably didn't want to do that. So this is going to end up being an Earthshaker in the offlane. Nothing too surprising there. Um, maybe the Winter Wyvern helps him out a little. But then we're gonna, of course, have the Bloodseeker safe lane and the Shadow Fiend mid. Oop, that was one too many. 
There we go. But Shadow Fiend mid, Bloodseeker offlane. This is all just the usual, and I mean, it works, right? This is actually kind of upsetting for, for ninjas in pajamas because they know they can't challenge this. Like, Gyrocopter just puts out too much damage this early on. Actually, they find the line. He's dropping. And the race. Oh, so close. And Disruptor. Look at him. He's going in. He's got boots. He wants no tail. Does he have the, the Bloodseeker? No, 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 no. He doesn't have the vision. And he still gets it, though. Hanskin diving deep for that kill. But no retaliation from Cloud9, so he's gonna get it. That's really, really big for NIP here. Of course, they managed to take two kills before the game even really starts. That's very, very nice. Uh, it's not that big of a deal for Big Daddy no tail. Because he already got his portal, right? Like, that's really what you do with IO. You just don't buy anything at the start. Get yourself that rune and buy a bottle immediately. Because bottle is just straight up the best item you can buy on IO. But at the same time, it's going to be nice for the Disruptor. You know, helps him helps him do a bit more in this game. Yeah, why not, right? Like, that's going to probably get them, like, an earlier flying courier though i expect them to get that as soon as possible anyway but it's just all around really nice like i lo i love having money on supports right i think that's really how you win at dota right now you get your supports a bit of cash anyway oh man that poor poor bloodseeker is actually getting run over by a trilane right now the winter wyvern was down here a second ago hanskin is in the mid he's zoning out father which is actually pretty decent i guess right like this this lightning spam is pretty damn annoying i don't think i don't think shadow fiend is the kind of hero that needs help against the Zeus, but it's nice right like the thing is shadow fiend if left uninterrupted will destroy your soul like literally he's just gonna jump out of the computer and rip your soul out and eat it but he can also do well, you know, without any help. And he can just, you know, be on his own and fight Fata. And I think he should be okay. It's going to be difficult for sure, but it shouldn't be impossible. Just needs to sit back a bit and, you know, play the lane safe. Oh, actually Bone 7 dropping a bit right here. And they're going to try to turn it around. They've got no tail around. The movement speed buff pretty pretty nice. Seal kill dropping. I don't know, they don't, can't seem to agree who they want to go for. No tail is still going for Seal kill. Gets him. And they're now going for Jonathan Fan. Okay, I like that. That was pretty cute. That was pretty cute. I guess they knew the Vyman didn't have any any boots ready. Oh, wow. Mid lane in the meantime. Disruptor goes down. Fata is dropping. And we have Shadowfin chasing him. Shadowfin does have a race. And Shadowfin does also have boots. So it should be a pretty simple kill. Now, I wonder... He didn't get, he didn't get a bottle yet. Huh. Got boots first. I don't like that. I really don't. I think that's a terrible decision. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit weird, but... Oh, wait. Is that his bottle? Oh, so the Disruptor did have it. Okay. I, I, I thought I checked in his inventory, but I must have missed it. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so I, I think boots early, of course. Like, you want to have those, but get a bottle. Right? Bottle is what really makes everything possible. And I guess Boots just got him in kill, but nonetheless, you need a bottle. But he has it, so what am I even going on about, right? Meantime, Bloodseeker trying to farm at the bottom. He isn't actually doing that well against the Gyrocopter, which I don't think is particularly surprising, because, well, it's a fucking Gyrocopter, right? But, oh wow. Gyrocopter's dropping here. No, no, he's gonna be fine. Would have been really surprised if he actually ended up dying right there. And Winter Wild I'm taking a bunch of damage again. Yeah, Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is like trying to farm down here and it's not working. He's got four last hits compared to the Gyrocopter's 18. That's just not very good. <laughs> and I have to, I have to admit, I don't like what, what NIP is doing here. They're spending a lot of time on the mid lane. They're spending a lot of time on, on top even, where we had the Winter Wild One help out Jonathan fan for a little bit. And I don't like that at all. Right? I don't think that's actually going to work out for them. In the slightest. That's just gonna result in no, none of their lanes getting any money. Mid doesn't need it. Right, I think Shadow Fiend can handle this lane. He should be able to. Like, that's just something that should be possible for him. Bloodseeker can't. Bloodseeker is gonna lose against a Gyrocopter horribly. Like, not even close. He's just gonna get run over. Especially if he has the IO to support him or the Lion. Lion has mostly been around misery. Really keeping the pace going right here. Oh, that was so close. An error. Probably dead. 
Yeah, you see this. And he doesn't have any support. He doesn't have anybody around. Both of the supports are back in the base somewhere. And that's just not gonna... That's just not gonna result in a strong Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is the kind of hero that needs a bit of money. But uh, I feel like Bloodseeker wants early money more so than anything else. He doesn't really care much about, like, being super farmed in the late game. Because he's not the strongest, really, like, late game, like, super late game hero, right? But... He does want early money so he can join those fights early. That's what you pick a Bloodseeker for, right? You pick a Bloodseeker so you can get himself. So the Bloodseeker picks himself up, I don't know, boots, drums, right? Maybe a blade mail. And then just immediately starts fighting people. But your archers aren't doing that right now. And that Bloodseeker won't start fighting people for a while. It might even be smartest for him to just go into the jungle for a little while because he's not getting anything down here, right? This is a waste of time. This is just not going to result in anything at all. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to see, I guess. That tower is probably going to fall. That might actually enable Arrow to get a bit more money. He's going to put down one of those seals, just trying to chase them away. And he wants to get that deny if he can. He's actually going to get it. That's pretty big. No, that's actually really, really important. So, this might actually give Era a bit more time, right? This might give him the opportunity he needs to farm up a bunch. But right now, he's just not that scary, right? And a Bloodseeker that isn't scary is just... <laughs> what are you doing, right? How can a Bloodseeker even not be scary? How is that possible? But it is. Oh, oh my god. The Shadow Fiend is going in deep. It's gonna get hexed, gonna get some, and he's dead. He's just dead. Just dead. Just dead as Shadow Fiend that has ever been deaded. We got a nice seal that's gonna connect on three heroes. They all silence, but it doesn't matter. They lose the Winter Vyman on top of it. Yeah, buddy. That was a bad decision. <laughs> I don't like the way that Shadow Fiend is playing. I gotta admit, I'm sorry. This is just not very good. Oh, well. So yeah, but uh, we got the, the got the disruptor, Urshake here, and Winter Wyvern trio. Now the thing about these heroes is that they are really defensive, right? Like if you think about it, we've got Winter Wyvern, obviously a defensive support, right? Like the the Cold Embrace is a very powerful defensive ability. Um, oh my God, they can lose the Shadow Fiend again. Hanskin is also dropping. Nice, Jonathan fan coming in with the big ultimate. Gets the Gyrocopter taken down. Bloodseeker, he is around. Bloodseeker is gonna come in because he does have the movement speed. And Era, he is fast. At the very least, he gives his team vision. That last attack is going to fly, and Jonas fan takes the kill. Kind of unnecessary to put out the Fisher for that, but I guess he just wanted to secure it for himself. <laughs> Greedy son of a bitch. Nah, that's fine. Right, like, make sure you get the kill. But I guess Bloodseeker, right? You see, this is what I was talking about. Usually, at, at a fight like that, you expect a Bloodseeker to come rush in with, like, 7,000 movement speed and get all of the kills, right? And... I guess the point of the hero. But he couldn't do that because he just doesn't have anything. He's got brown boots. He's got brown boots and his level 5. Like, how is he gonna get anything done this game? He just needs to find some space to farm. And they're gonna have the Shadow Fiend on jungle duty for a little while. So I guess it makes sense. Holy shit, this Shadow Fiend is bad. Okay, I, I have no other way to say it, but this is just not a very good Shadow Fiend player. I don't know if that's just a hero he's not used to, but you really should be used to Shadow Fiend in this patch. But he's missing his races. Look at look at how long it took him to kill this this camp. This should be three races and two right clicks, and you're done. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that. Oh well, Gyrocopter in the meantime fighting at the bottom. He's ruptured up, so he can't really go, and uh, he's gonna start fighting Arrow though. Yeah, I th at this level, level one rupture isn't that scary. It's really not. Oh, we got the Shadow Fiend coming in again. So, misses, misses a race. You see that? He's just missing his spells. This was the most obvious juke. Holy hell. I'm sorry. This is just not very good. Yeah, there goes down. There goes the Shadow Fiend again. Ah, that guy. Mm. Buddy, like with that kind of performance, you're not going to carry your team. He's probably good at farming or something along those lines, but his last hits are just uh, currently aren't up to power. 39 on the Shadow Fiend at 9 minutes. That's pathetic. Right, for another hero, that's okay. Right, like, Zeus has 36. Like, if you see a Zeus with 36 last hits at 9 minutes, you're like, ah, that kind of isn't great. Right, but it's okay. That's fine. That works. Because you're Zeus. You don't need that much money to be effective. Shadow Fiend is not that kind of hero. With Shadow Fiend at, at 
nine minutes at 10 minutes and you have 40 last hits, you might as well quit the game, right? Like, this is just pointless. You need to have 70, 80, 90, something along those lines. Like you need to have a really high number. You need to be leading the game. And he's just not. He's fourth. And we're not even talking about Netrof. If you take a look at Netrof, he's fifth. He's after the... Like, he's behind the Urshik who was offline. This is just not going to work out well for, for NIP if they don't change up the pace of the game. They gotta do something here. And what they have been doing has netted them a surprisingly high amount of kills, I have to admit, but their net worth just isn't keeping up, right? Like, that's always the thing. Yes, kill score is pretty even, 7 to 9. It's okay, Cloud9 is just slightly ahead, but that doesn't tell the whole story. This right here is the story, the net worth, right? Like, that's where they're doing, that's that's we're doing horribly. The hero levels, I guess, actually, the hero levels don't tell that much at this point. <laughs> but, right, net worth is so important right now, and it's just not really, not really working out. Okay, now. I don't want to keep bashing on a Shadow Fiend, though. I just kind of want to make the point that um, this guy needs to step up his game. Oh, Bloodseeker. Yeah, he finally got his boots at the very least. He's gonna start working on the Wing of Aquila. Which is nice, by the way. I like that. Uh, I like getting both stats items on Bloodseeker, actually. I like, I like getting Wing of Aquila and Drums. I don't know. It's just pretty neat. Does the I.O. have to go back? No, he teleported in from the mid, so that's unfortunate. But yeah, no, I, I think that's, def that, that's definitely a good call here. You know, get those going. It's gonna, gonna allow you to kind of be a bit more active, right? Like, it's just some really cheap, cheap stuff. It's just really effective, so yeah. And, uh, He's just gonna jungle up a bit. He really should. Like he just he, this particular right now needs to find some more money. In some sort of way. Now on, on the upside, uh, well it's not there, but still not over yet, right? Like we have some strong heroes on NIP. They do have a winter wire and they do have Earth Shaker. These are some of the best heroes in the game and they can certainly use them. I think Jonathan Fan has really probably played the best on his team. Not just for this game, but like period, Jonas on Fan is pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> no, I actually I actually really like watching him play, but poor guy gets murdered, right? <laughs> yeah, but the Urshek here is probably gonna be a key player here. Like he needs to really make a lot happen, which I think he can, but at the same time his team hmm. I just gotta gotta find a way to keep up right here. Oh there goes the winter vibe again. Look at this, Cloud9 is just freaking collapsing on NIP right now. That's that's crazy. I don't know if that's that's something they can come back from. Because like they don't have this late, they just don't. Right? Like late game is very, very easily in in Cloud9. Right, it's just not even a question about that. It's just you know, you have Storm Spirit, which already outcarries everybody on your team. Everybody, right? You have Gyrocopter, who also outcarries everybody on your team. You have Io, who is like the best late game supporter in the game. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. But you know, you get the idea, right? And you have uh, you have Line, great late game support as well. And then Zeus, who he's probably the, the hero that's gonna like fall off the most. But Zeus, you guys know what he does, which is deal a shitload of damage. So. I guess that's okay. They're actually gonna probably find Farta here. Uh, we got a Fisher ready. Yep, the Glimpse back, Fisher, two attacks, and uh, we're gonna have a kill for the Shadow Fiend. So he's uh, starting to work on his Mecha. I think Mecha right here is actually the right choice. I don't usually, um, like, I'm not usually a huge fan of Mecha on Shadow Fiend, right? Just because I don't like it, not because I think it's bad. It's definitely a good item, but this game, he's just been suffering a lot from ganks, you know, from, from getting killed. He's died four times at this point, which is just not that good for a Shadow Fiend. So, you want to get something that helps you survive. And Mecha is a great way of having that, right? Like, it's it's, it's gonna be a pretty, pretty defensive item, but I feel like he has to go for this defensive item. Yeah, he might even have to rush a BKB afterwards, right? I wouldn't like to see that, but he might have to. Why is he just sat banding there in that ultimate? Just waiting it out. Oh, he's gonna drop his own. They get Big Daddy No Tail. So that's at least one down. And the uh, Zeus ultimate dropping. Gyrocopter picked off as well. So Bloodseeker is just kind of sapping around right now. They got two. They're gonna lose four. 
So I'm not really sure how well that worked out for them. And Ara just has to go back. He's working on his plate mail now. That's generally a pretty good item on Blood Seeker. It's, it's cheap and it allows you to get some free attacks in basically. Right? That's how you have to think about it. You activate the blade mail and then your opponents don't really want to hit you. So you just hit them. <laughs> right? And you kind of like you get free attacks basically. But that's a 244. Not great for NIP. Really not fantastic. So what can they do to make this comeback happen? Well, first of all, they need to stop fighting, right? Like, this is just not working. Um, because they're just gonna get murdered. Like that, exactly. Oh, that's nice, though. They're gonna get Misery here. That's one down. They might get Fata, too. He's taking a lot of damage, but in the meantime, Stormspirit and Ayo coming in through the back. They lose the Ayo. They're gonna lose the Stormspirit, too. That's a triple kill for the Shadow Fiend. Holy hell, John awesome fan? Might also fall right here, but he's looking for Fata. He doesn't have his Blink Dagger yet. No, no, he doesn't. He isn't actually looking for Fata at all. He's looking to get away. <laughs> I don't know. But that was a 3-4-3. Three, three. But this one definitely worked out in NIP's favor. Because Shadowfing got a triple kill. That boosted up his net worth a lot. Right? You see that? He's now leading his team. He's still only fourth highest in the game. Which isn't great. But it's definitely better than having nothing at all. So... That's gonna be nice. So, what do they need to do? Well, first of all, finish up the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker, right? He's about to get it. So, that's that's already the first important step. Secondly, have the Winter Wyvern and have the Disruptor around the Shadow Fiend or the Bloodseeker, right? I think, like, one for one might be a good idea, but they, they need to protect those heroes. And they need to play defensively, right? In case somebody comes to gank them, your response shouldn't be, okay, let's fight. Your response should be, glimpse back, run away. Right, something along those lines. They do have those defensive options. Bloodseeker right now, he just needs to get a BKB. He needs to farm up, he needs to become powerful. And uh, he's well on his way there, but he needs to get there, right? And, and Shadow Fiend, kind of the same true for him. These guys, I feel they just need to avoid fights, and they need to say, okay, you know what, we're going to use our farming potential, which we do have, and get ourselves a lot of money. Now, at the same time, the problem is that Cloud9, I think Cloud9 just drafted a better team, if I'm completely honest, but... Gyrocopter has a mecha. Uh, that's a bit unusual. I don't know. I haven't seen a mecha on a Gyrocopter yet. I can't see why you would get it. Kind of the same logic as to, like, why would you get a mecha on Shadow Fiend. I feel like mecha on a lot of those, like, usual, usually typical right-click carries is pretty common these days. And it, the reasoning is always kind of the same, which is, well, it's not great for Gyrocopter, right? It's just not. But he has the money, and we want a mecha for our team. Oh, Glimpse back. He's actually going to be caught right here. I wonder if they have enough damage. He's taking a lot of damage. The, oh, wow, the races. The Disruptor ultimate on top of it, and they get him. In the meantime, Big Daddy Nota coming in from the back. He's frozen up, but not much that's going to come from doing that. Nota is actually going to end up being fine, I think. Yes, he gets out. He relocates somebody else away, I think. Bone 7 is still in the middle of it. Line goes down. Bone 7. He went in deep, and he's actually going to pay for it. He's going to fall right here as well. And I think Cloud9, they're just overcommitting to these fights. Era gets another triple kill. Well, the first one went to Shadow Fiend, but this one goes to Era, And NIP is going to take those, right? Those triple kills are actually really important because that boosts up the net worth of the heroes significantly. You can see that, right? Like, all of a sudden, they've overtaken the Gyrocopter in farm. So... I feel like Cloud9 is may maybe going in a bit too deep. Like, this is just a bit silly now. Hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess if that's what they want to do. But uh, Mechel and Gyrocopter, I, he's really tanky, as you can see. Right? Like, it took them a while to kill him. So I kind of like it in that regard. What I don't like about it is, of course, the mana usage. That's right? Like, that's always a problem. A Gyrocopter is always lacking in mana. And um, having an item that just costs this much is a bit troublesome. He has a magic wand to help make up for it, so I guess it should be fine. But, uh, well, we're going to see. Of course, he's also not going to right-click as hard. But I feel he can allow to do that. He can allow himself to do that, right? Just because he has a Storm Spirit. And this Storm Spirit is doing none of that nonsense, right? No mechas. No. No four stars. No glimmer games. Fuck that. I'll kill people. I got myself a Bloodstone. And I'm going to start working towards the Hex probably next. Or maybe maybe an Orchid. Something like those lands. We're just going to sap around and murder shit. So let's fucking go. Also, please ignore that. Take low. It's replays, man. Replays are bloggy. I forget how it goes. There's not much I can do about it, right? It's not really my fault. So. Oh no, this is big. 
Gyrocopter found himself some jungle camps. Mm, that's unfortunate. If he gets to take those, it's actually pretty important. Oh, Jonathan found dropping pretty low. He is actually still alive. Shadowfin's gonna pop an ultimate just for a bit of damage, and Bone 7 is actually dropping. He's silenced. Oh no, that is really bad. Can they get him? Oh wow, they take the they take the uh, the Storm Spirit and Gyrocopter's just sitting there. Did they disconnect that or what was up with that? He wasn't even ruptured. And that's interesting. Okay. Okay, I feel like Cloud9 is kind of throwing it a little right now. Uh, they're definitely, definitely helping NIP close the gap. If we take a look at the, the net worth charts. Oh, I think the wrong button this one right here. Where, like, they're still ahead, but not by that much anymore. Like, it's definitely closing. Oh, see kid. Look at him. Look at him being cheeky. Yeah, of course, he can fly wherever the hell he wants to. It's not gonna be enough. No, not at all. But, you know. Gonna buy, buy his team some time, I suppose. Well, look at this. Like, this is just being annoying. There's nothing that's actually gonna come from it, but, yeah. I suppose it's not an issue. So Cloud9 should actually be looking at Roshan at this point, I feel. They do have that Storm Spirit who can make great use of an Aegis. So that seems like a really decent idea. Problem is they don't have a great way of killing him, right? They don't have a lot of physical damage. So it's gonna take them a little while, but... Ah, I, I always think like given enough time at a certain point in the game, you're always gonna be able to kill Roshan, right? So... As you can see, they don't have an Ursa or a Slado or something like that, but I don't know. Like a thousand, a thousand paper cuts eventually gets to the core of the whole thing, right? So they're gonna be able to take him down. Bone Seven is actually getting himself a BKB next. I can definitely, definitely see that as a good item. Like I, I can agree with it. It's just one of those things, man. Yeah. You gotta get a BKB this game either way, right? Like that disruptor, of course. He's not gonna get an Aghanims anytime soon, so you don't have to worry about that. And you still want to get rid of the Static Storm, so yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get let's get a BKB. That silence is annoying. We of course have an Earthshaker. You want to block some of his nonsense. Can't really do much about the Winter Wyvern, but yeah. You know, it's gonna be nice nonetheless. And I think you can block the, the Blood Raid. Yeah, you can't block the Rupture, but Rupture isn't that important for Storm Spirit anyway because he doesn't actually have to walk. <laughs> so, yeah. Looking at defending this top tower right here. Oh, Zeus Ultimate just for scouting. I always think that's so weird because, I don't know, Zeus ultimate in my eyes is always something that you use to like have a big team fight and you go in and you're like, yeah, let's kill everything. And then you just use it for scouting. Oh, I'm actually gonna find a gyrocopter again. Oh, nice relocate by the way. Okay, so I was gonna sacrifice himself, I guess. Actually, Jonathan fan is dropping, holy hell. Just from the long range nuke coming out, but there's no way Gy uh, Big Daddy don't take some this one. There's just nothing he can do. Shadowfiend, by the way, getting a BKB next. So, as I already mentioned, like he might just go super defensive. And it turns out that's exactly it. He already has it, which is nice. So, he's starting to pick up the pace a bit, right? He's starting to get back into the gist of things. He should be, yeah, 120 last hits by now. He is still pretty bad, but he didn't have a great early game. He's died seven times. It's just like... That sucks, right? That's the highest amount of deaths in the game. That's Shadowfiend, man. You can shut the zero down. And I feel like that's something so many players forget about. Shadowfiend doesn't actually have a great way of defending himself really on, right? So just kill him. And kill him again. And then when he's, when he's back in the lane, kill him again. right? Make him rage quit. Make him just be so mad at you. Because if you don't, he'll we'll just kill you. You're just gonna lose the game. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's of course something you want to avoid. Jonathan fan, by the way, got his Glimmer Cape. I, I expect a lot of those coming up soon. Yeah, we got a... Actually, a Glimmer Cape on Winter Wyvern, probably, and the Glimmer Cape on a <laughs> Disruptor. Holy hell, that's a lot of those. I mean, it's gonna be good this game, don't get me wrong. Cloud9 certainly has enough magic to wear on three Glimmer Capes, but it's still a little bit odd to see that, right? That just... 
Holy hell, that's a lot of glimmer caves. That's all I'm saying. Bloodseeker not got this BKB. That's scary. Arrow's gonna be able to be pretty powerful in those fights. And, uh, well, that's really what MIP needed. Like, I think they are straight back into this game. This is, while it's still in the favor of Cloud9, it's definitely not insurmountable, right? Like, this is something at 25 minutes, a 5k difference, that's okay. Right, like, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's a noticeable lead. It's something that's going to have an impact on the game. But, it's okay. Right, like, you can't deal with that. So, I feel, I feel NIP definitely has a shot at winning this. Uh, this is interesting. <laughs> God damn it. He replies. <laughs> what will please? Please, what the hell? <sighs> uh, this replay isn't even old. This replay was played like, or this game was played like, actually, I don't know, like four days ago. So it's, I guess, no, that doesn't count as old. Seriously, you can't watch a replay four days after the match took place? You gotta be kidding me. Right, that's just ridiculous. No, 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 that does not qualify as old. I do not accept it. Oh well. BKB now down on the storm, and he goes in deep. Look at this guy. Holy hell. BKB used from the Shadow Fiend, so he's gonna be fine. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> now storm is, all, uh, storm is all glowy and shit. I mean, it looks cool, but holy hell. Stop being silly. Oh, mm, well. No, Tay, I'm gonna stop working on his glimmer cape. Yeah, you're going to hear that sentence a lot. So I got Bloodstone uh, and Blink. I wonder if he's going for Refresh next or what's coming up. Could also be like Aghanims or, or Veil, I guess. Veil, I think, is actually going to be really nice this game. So maybe that. I personally like Refresher. I think Refresher is really solid. But uh, we're going to see about it, right? Lion got Blink Dagger, four stuff. This is actually a pretty rich Lion. Ah, that's scary. Like, Lion has one of the best initiations in the game. Right? You jump in. Hex. Comes out instantly. And right now it's a 2.5 second disable, but it's going to go up to 4 seconds. Right? So, you jump in and you stun somebody for 4 seconds instantly. No cast time, nothing. That is strong. That is really scary. And it's going to make a big difference, I think. Like, Misery is definitely... Definitely going to appreciate it. So, yeah, I... Yeah, I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of scared for NIP just because this line is this farmed. And line is really the kind of support that's going to scale well. Right? Like, this guy becomes powerful and more powerful and more powerful. It's not really about his damage output. It's just that the longer the game lasts, the more powerful the disable becomes. I know that sounds a bit silly, but a 4 second just straight up hex is much more powerful, uh, like, at later stages in the game than it is earlier. on. That's why people don't max it right away, right? Because it has that one really good value point of 2.5 seconds disable. But you don't need 4 seconds early on. It just doesn't make much of a difference. Well, later on... Oh my god, 4 seconds is so huge. That's 4 seconds of free attacks from your carry. That's gonna... Like, oftentimes that's enough to kill somebody. But if you think about it, right? Like, if you're at 3 minutes into the game, who can really kill somebody in 4 seconds? Ah, it takes a bit longer than that most of the time. So, yeah, that's gonna be pretty scary. Gyrocopter now got a BKB. What I don't like about this build is that Gyrocopter isn't actually that huge of a threat right now. I feel if you want to go for this kind of style, then you should actually max out the Missa. Uh, he's not done that. And uh, it might be a bit of a mistake, because like getting stats is more of a right click build, right? It gives you some more survivability, it allows you to hit a little bit harder, and you know, it just kind of generally enables you a bit more. But he's not going for that. Like, he doesn't actually hit at all. He hits for 140 damage, which is nothing. If you consider armor, let's say Shadow Fiend has 14 armor, which reduces damage by 46%. It's like 70 damage per attack. It's gonna take him, what, 20 hits to take down the Shadow Fiend? Like, that's just not really that good, right? Like, that's, that's gonna take forever. So... He, he really, I, I feel like, would be better off going for the missile, which actually, like, deals some damage. And, um, you know, at least if he's not going for any sort of right-click. I expect him to go for something, 
like probably a Saint and Yasha I wouldn't see as too bad maybe just some straight up damage in form of an MKB he could also get butterfly I wouldn't mind a blood but blood of a blood of you know, a butterfly I think a butterfly would actually be pretty neat but Overall, I've, he just has to build something that helps him survive, man. He just gotta go somewhere and it's gonna be strong. No, wait, not survive, but that helps him kill, right? He's gotta go somewhere that, that makes the opponents dead. Because that's just not something he brings to the table right now. Apart from his spells, right? And then he's skipping one, which I don't like. Got Basher, no on error. That's interesting. I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out like a great Godseeker build. I kind of like Sanjin and Yasha, but it might be unnecessary. It's just really fun to zap around with like a thousand movement speed. <laughs> but Basher probably gonna be upgraded into an Abyssal Blade as soon as possible. That's kind of neat, I would say. Uh, why not? Right, like you're gonna hit pretty hard. Blade Mail, I think it's just a no-brainer. Like Blade Mail is just so obviously good. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Cloud9 is going to start working on the base of NAP now. Yeah, I think their farming phase is really quite done. It seems like they are just not not up for putting up with any more of this nonsense. The ad just sadly ran out, but they are ahead by... Oh, it's getting slightly more again, right? But I feel like they have more fighting power at the moment. It's just they have the BKB done on the Gyrocopter and the Zeus and the Storm, right? Like, they have all the items they need for now. That should enable them to fight. Right? I should just give them the option of going in on some people. Oh, Seal Kid is kind of in a bad spot. Era too, but Era I think, is more difficult to kill. Actually, they're going to go for Era. He's frozen up. Finger coming out, though. He's still fine. I mean, like, this is a Bloodseeker. He's going to die right He doesn't even activate his BKB. He's well aware that he's not getting out of that one. Meantime, we have the Storm Spirit take down the Seal Kid on the Winter Wyvern. So that's two free kills for Cloud9. And I would expect to see some sort of pressure now. Right, maybe the mid, maybe the top, but uh, something. Right, I don't think they're just going to sit back and wait this one out. I feel like that's probably a bad idea. Because he can get a free tower. Or maybe even two. Right, like if you pressure top and mid at the same time. NIP, right now, with those two heroes dead, have no way of fighting. They just can't. So, but no, seems Cloud9 is going to sit back again. This game has been pretty calm over the past few minutes, right? It ha it was really aggressive and really exciting before that, but right now, both teams are just a little scared. They don't want to go in when they don't have to. <laughs> I can kind of see that. Oh, they actually find Eskil. He's taking a lot of pressure, but the Glimmer Cape is going to keep him safe for the time being. Picked himself an ultimate hold. I wonder what that's actually going to end up being. It could ob obviously... I think the obvious choice is Scotty, right? Like, Scotty is what you expect to see here. Not sure, though. It could be a lot else, right? It could be... could be a Hex. could be Lincolns. Maybe, right? I expect it's a Scotty. Let's be honest. <laughs> he has a lot of money saved up, too. He could also be a Sheepstick. I wouldn't mind a Sheepstick if I'm completely honest, but... It <laughs> nah, it's probably going to be a Scotty. So, yeah, uh, this is kind of you know, to be expected. And he's actually catching up. Like this Shadow Fiend, yeah, he's still not the highest net worth in the game, but he's not behind by a lot, right? Like he's really like straight up there with everybody else. So I think he's actually becoming pretty scary. He's actually becoming a force to reckon with, and that's just kind of that's why you pick Shadow Fiend, right? This hero is just pretty consistent. This is somebody you can pick, and he's gonna have money, no matter what, and that's nice. Oh, glimpse back. Fata's trap activates the BKB, so he's gonna be fine. Error activates his BKB as well, goes in, but doesn't really seem like committing to anything. Oh no. Oh, this is so bad for NIP. They've used all of their BKBs. Oh my god, Fata uses his ultimate just a second too early. Eskil tries to channel his ultimate, and uh, he's actually gonna be caught out here. No, 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 they don't find him. Wow. Okay, so they only lose one. That was a bit of a quirky fight. Like, a shitload of BKBs used. Everybody threw it out there immediately, but nobody got anything out of it. That always makes it a bit a bit interesting to see what comes afterwards, because those are on cooldown now. So which team actually values their BKBs more? And it seems that team is... MIP. Actually, no, they're fighting. Okay. Hands good. He's dropping. 
Bone Seven is going on the disruptor. He takes him down. Gyrocop the picks off the Shadow Fiend. And that is pretty big. I feel like Cloud9 is able to really break into the base of NIP now. They are in a good position to do it, right? They're right in front of it. And they just took down two important heroes. And they're gonna go back. Come on. No, it cancels the TP. And it turns out that was an accident. Great work, Bonza. <laughs> Come on now. You people, you professionals. Oh, man. Oh, well. So far, there has a BKB now. Uh, at this point, I would expect to see a refresher. But I also don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Could be everything, right? It could be a hex for like here. Could be yours. Could be. I still wouldn't mind a veil of discord. Oh, by the way, I saw that butterfly coming though. Boom, baby. Oh, yeah, look at that. TP boots. Okay, I guess. You know, I like the butterfly. I think the butterfly is really neat. Right? That's gonna. That's actually like a lot of damage and also additional survivability. So this Chirocopter right now is actually super fucking tanky, right? Try to kill him. He has 1800 HP, complete magic immunity, 35% evasion, and he can heal himself. Like, oh my god, how do you, how do you kill this? Like, what do you do? There's just not much you can do, so that's a bit of a problem. And now he can just build damage, right? Now he can just say, okay, you know what, I'll get an MKB, I'll get a Delolos, I'll get a... I guess that's it, right? Could, could get a Divine Rape here, I suppose. No, but I, I, I expect to see an MKB from him, just so he actually starts hitting hard. And that's actually going to be pretty scary. Because I don't think they have the power to kill him. Shadow Fiend, uh, he still has a lot of money saved up. Maybe he wants to have it for buyback? Doesn't have enough souls right now. Which is actually pretty significant. Because, you know, it reduces his damage output by a lot. So. That's a bit unfortunate. Era. Uh, he just doesn't care about his team. Uh, all of them are down here. And Era is just like, oh, you know, let me go and check if there's a rune. Oh, there's some creeps. Let me go and attack him now, too. <laughs> I like Era. That's how we do it, man. That's how we do it. There's a Jarrick of the Illusion. And uh, this is an interesting situation. The Radiant is on the Dire side of the river. And the Dire is on the Radiant side of the river. Smoke coming out from Cloud9. Oh, that is going to be big. Oh, that is a huge smoke. Do they find anybody? Misery kind of scouts somebody else. They drop uh, out. They drop the they drop the suit's ultimate disruptor, taking a lot of them. He's getting protected by the Winter Wyvern, though. And we have the Gyrocopter. Ruptured, so he can't really move around. Hanskin drops his ultimate before he falls. And now the Shadow Fiend might be next. And now he still has his BKB ready. He's been very patient with that. Very, very good. Like, you gotta do that. But Seer Kid, he's gonna fall. Zeus, in the meantime, picks off the Jonathan fan. Oh, that's bad. They lose three. They get nothing. Era. Oh, no. Era's actually caught out. He gets one of those kills. He's trying to take down Fata, but he's just not gonna be able to pull that one off. Eskil, he's back in it. He's gonna try to find a gyrocopter, but he should have finished up his item. No. <laughs> if he actually had his item right now, he would be in such a better spot. And oh my god, Bone 7 finds Era. He's stunned up, but I don't know if they can do it. I don't know if they have the damage. It's not even the damage I'm worried about. I'm worried about the lack of disable. Jonathan Fan goes in. Of course, Earthshaker, he does have another possible. St what is that? Oh, he killed himself. God damn it. Really? Uh. Oh, well. So, Era, Era knew. Very little chance of him getting away, but... There was also no way that, you know, NIP actually gets the kill. Because Bloodstone. Double Bloodstone is actually going to be pretty annoying, right? Okay, we have a point booster, though. Probably going to be an Agonist. So he, he wants to have the additional tankiness. Like that's really like the two things with Zeus, right? Like you have the choice between Aghanims, which is more HP for the Zeus, but a little bit less damage. And the Refresher, which is just straight up more damage for the Zeus, but no survivability whatsoever. And uh, that's a bit of a problem. He drops an ultimate just to scout out what NIP is doing. Yeah, that is... 
Such a powerful thing about this hero. He can finish up the Aghanims if he wants to. Seems he wants to keep buyback. I actually don't think that's necessary. Right? I feel like he can very easily just, you know, get himself in that freaking uh, dead Aghanims. But I guess he doesn't want to. And uh, at the same time, there's not really much of a point to it. Because right now his ultimate is on cooldown anyway. John has some fan force. I don't like that. I don't like what the uh, what NIP is doing here. Like they're going in, but not like really. They're just kind of going in, and they lose two heroes. That's just not a thing you can do, right? You either go in as a team, or you just let them have it. Because if you go in one by one, you, those heroes are just going to end up dying. And then they still get the edges. So the progress you're making is exactly none. Not a big fan of that. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that NIP, even though they are a very, very good team, they're still making a lot of kind of scrubbish mistakes, right? They're making a lot of mistakes that don't really don't really put them into the same spot as a tier 1 team, like as for example, you know, Cloud9 or one of the best teams in the world and uh, as much as I would like to say that NIP put up a good fight, and I guess they did, it's just not enough, right? Oh, look at that Shadowfin picking up a cloak, he just wants God, all of that magic yeah, I can totally see why, but I don't know, man. That that might just be a bit of a half measure. Well, base is getting broken down, and uh, with Urshaker dead, it's gonna be tough. Barriers are probably gonna fall. The Bloodseeker's back alive. But without the Urshaker, I don't know if they can defend it. I really don't. Bone 7 is just sitting here, doesn't care. He doesn't have to care, right? Like, why would he have to care? He's Storm Spirit. He's like a ball of electricity. There's a Storm Spirit in there somewhere, by the way. Okay, Urshaker's back. Sue's ultimate drop defensively. Just disabled on disabling the blink daggers and shenanigans, you know, giving some vision. But yeah, Barracks goes down and. There's just not much NIP can do now. Cloud9, I think, are gonna rotate to the bottom. They do have that Aegis ready. And with that mid barracks down, like, that's actually really important. Like, this is just a huge psychological advantage as well, but oh my god. NIP's running in. And look at that. They find Misery, but ah, oh, did they really? Bone 7 activates the BKB. He goes for the Urshek. He gets them right away. Askill is standing in the middle. All of the BKBs are used, but Era is still dropping. He's very, very low, and Bone 7 is gonna finish him off. That's a double kill for him. They lose the Shadow Fiend. They lose everybody except for the Disruptor. And that's gonna be him. GG is caught. Cloud9 takes it over NIP. And that's the game. Boom, baby. Boom, baby. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating on the video. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, a lot of competitive games. I guess we could actually take a quick look. Like, really quick, okay? Just... Just really quick, I just want to show you my problem. If it actually loads. Maybe Dota crashes. Maybe that's what happens, right? Maybe Dota just dies. Uh, wait, let me just close Dota really quick. Yeah, no, fuck you. <gasps> Sorry about that. I can't do anything about Dota dying. But I just want to show you, like, my problem with, with casting games right now. Because it's just like, those games are kind of lame. <laughs> so let me go ahead and load into this. So let's go ahead and uh, go into watch. And this is usually the, the page I use. So let's go ahead and, for example, look at the Summit 3. Game 1, really. They're, these are all best of ones, by the way. But if you take a look at this game, 34-10. Pretty one-sided, right? Like, this is super one-sided. This one, I actually kind of considered that one because it is Tusk Techies, which is kind of fun. But yeah. Um, pretty one-sided. Again, 27 minutes, complete stop. Right, just like crazy one-sided. Wind Ranger 9, I don't know, it was just... Uh, next game. Oh, right, yet again. Well, actually, no, that's the one. No, no, that one is actually longer. Yeah, you know what? I could have done that one. But that, I didn't pick this one because it's kind of boring. Like, if you look at the kind of amount of kills. That's just like seven kills in that entire game, so I didn't want that. This is... uh. Not today versus Void Boys. Extremely one-sided yet again. It's just... Uh, 
I don't know. And that's not even just that tournament. Like, we could just go to Dota Pit League and then take a look at this game. Right, 25 minutes, completely one-sided. Okay, um, let's take a look at the next game. 29 minutes, completely one-sided. Okay, and let's go and take a look at the next game. 33 minutes, completely one-sided. Okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at the next game. 30 minutes, completely one-sided. <laughs> Do you see the problem? <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you tomorrow.